Welcome to the Blind Justice Podcast, where you discover the insider secrets of injury and accident cases, and all of your law questions get answered. Now, here's your host, Chicago injury lawyer, Scott DeSalvo. Hey guys, it's Scott DeSalvo on the uh, Blind Justice Podcast here with my amazing co-host, Amelia Finnefrock. And we're here today to talk to you about an interesting topic. Well, I'm a lawyer and I think it's interesting. And I got to think that people are going to find it interesting because I get a lot of calls about this kind of case. I'm already interested. You're just, you're all ears now, right? Yeah. Fascinating. That intro Our, was very strong. <laughs> so strong. Yes. Um, yeah. So the topic today are cases against the city of Chicago. And there's like usually two main kind of cases I handle in my office, although so there are other kinds of cases. Um, the main thing we're going to talk about are fall downs on city sidewalks, though. That's super common. I get calls really? about that all the time. That's crazy. Can I share something with you personal? Please. Before Please. we it's delve a safe right in place. Yes. to the super yeah. exciting topic. Sure. Um, I'm so tired of eating salad and lettuce. Yes. It makes me sad. Oh, my goodness. Seven days now, yes, right? Yes, I'm, I'm trying to do my diet again, and I'm trying to be so good. Scott. You know you're hungry when you eat a salad and it tastes delicious to you. Right. That's how you know you're hungry. But you have that, like, you have the glow, like the, like, I eat salad all the time. Look. Like, you look. I look like, really tired you today, look good. actually. Like, <laughs> it's been seven days, but, you know. Well, I've lost some weight, That's and I think awesome. I've I can already see it in my face a little bit. But um, I have, you know, I always have bags under my eyes. My mom, my mom, I think I I inherited it from my mom, like yeah, some dark hereditary? circles and bags I and stuff. It's, it's kind of hereditary. Yeah. So if I'm tired, you can immediately tell. And even yeah. sometimes when I'm not tired, you I just look like maybe it's when I eat salt. I don't know. Is there so? Are you a fan of V8 like vegetable? juice um you know i don't really like vegetable juice i have to be straight with you yeah. uh, years ago i tried juicing you know like where it's you're eating yeah, kale that's a big and thing super and how'd that go the cool thing is i do get used to pretty much anything especially if i'm yeah. hungry you know you're hungry when like 16 ounces of kale juice <laughs> sound like a good idea <laughs> right <laughs> Yes, and please, on this, more of that. <laughs> and on this diet, I'm eating like uh, I'm mainly just eating vegetables. Like I'm trying to avoid salt, fat, sugar. I'm trying to just like really. I'm, I'm giving it like a 30 day shot. I want to see Good how much you. weight. That's you know, awesome. I read Penn Gillette. It's those guys, Penn and Teller, those magicians. Yeah. Okay. In Las Vegas, uh, Penn Gillette lost like a hundred pounds in a hundred days. What? Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Based off this diet? Yeah. And he lost. Oh, wow. He lost like. 0.9 pounds per day. What? That is amazing. So just, do you drink only water as well? Like, no... Yeah, I drink... I, I am drinking black coffee. Okay. Probably two or three cups a day. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is just water. If I'm, at a, if I'm at a restaurant and they have it, I'll drink soda water, which is just carbonated water. water. It's zero yeah. calories. Wow. With, like, a twist of lime. And then... For lunches, I'll go out and eat a salad. There might be a little bit of cheese in the salad, but no meat, no bread, bread no nothing. It's literally no, bread. no dressing. No bread. Ugh. And then for dinner, I've been eating like a bag of frozen vegetables, like stir fry vegetables. And I just steam them. No. Like they're not, no oil, no flavoring. Can you have tofu? Um, you know, here's the thing. I could have tofu. I could eat meat if I want to. Right. But what I'm trying to do is keep it to, like, lower sugar, very nutrient-rich vegetables. Sure. Right. Because my goal here is my, my blood pressure is a little bit high, and I'm too heavy. So my goal for the 30 days is eating very clean like this. I want to see, can I lose? You know, I'm not shooting for a pound a day right. like Penn Jillette. I'm shooting for... Can I lose, in a month, can I lose 15 or 20 pounds right. in a month doing this? And shockingly, like, my appetite has already adapted. Wow. Like, I'm not going to lie, awesome. I do get hungry. Right. But I also get full pretty quick. See, the body is an amazing thing. That's a, I thought that was pretty cool because I, I did the vegan challenge this past month, and that was something I was afraid of. Like, I was going to have an endless pit in my stomach, but your body really does adjust accordingly. And yeah. 
I've, I've lost that since I've stopped doing that. But that's awesome that that transition's already happening. Yeah, I mean, it makes it it makes not eating much easier if you're not, like, starving to right. death. Right, yeah. <laughs> I also will drink, like, decaf green tea at night because that's just supposedly good for you. It's it is good for you. It's got flavonoids or whatever, oh. like antioxidants. Yeah, I've also heard that, like, uh, apple cider vinegar is really big. Doing yeah, a shot I of that. What is up with that? That's like all over the internet all of a sudden. Yeah. They're like, you should, it's good for your insulin sensitivity, whatever that is. And yeah. like, oh, it's good for losing weight. Maybe I should like be doing a tablespoon or two yeah. in water in the morning. Maybe that would help me. They they say do like two shots in the morning when you wake up, right, right when you wake up. And I, I did it. I'm not really sure if it had an impact. I definitely felt like my taste buds were burned away a little bit. It's very intense, straight vinegar. Yeah. I don't know if I would want to drink apple cider vinegar straight. Yeah. Well, I'm a weirdo. I like vinegar, so. Agreed. Yeah. For sure, you're super I was into it, but. But that's why all of our listeners love you, Amelia, because you're so friggin' weird. Oh, gosh. Well, what does it say about you? Well, weird is at least interesting. It is. Right? I mean, (laughs) and me calling you weird is a classic case of pot calling kettle black. (laughs) Anyway. Darth Vader mug. Let's jump into this topic. So city against uh, cases against city of Chicago. So I'm not telling anyone who lives in the city of Chicago a surprise when I say there are a million horrible broken sidewalks with holes in them, yes. um, streets with potholes, potholes so broken potholes. curbs. Yes. So I'm not I, like I even when I, you know, before I started my own firm 11 years ago, uh, you know, I practiced law for about 10 years before that or almost 10 years before that. I've handled a ton of city sidewalk cases. And so when I was a puppy lawyer, brand new lawyer, and I was handling these kinds of cases, you could kind of settle them with the city of Chicago, right? City of Chicago would like look at the photos and say, all right, this is pretty bad. This clearly was here for a long time. Right. We'll make you an offer. Well, that has changed. And in fact, uh, for more than 10 years now, city of Chicago has a no settle policy for a, for a sidewalk fall. So no matter what the defect, how bad the hole is, how long it's been there, if other people have fallen there, city of Chicago, zero offer. It's a sure trial. And so... um, Isn't that like their one job to keep city of Chicago safe? Yeah, it's like that meme. (laughs) You had one job, bro. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. There's city of Chicago has... uh, It benefits from the Tort Immunity Act, right? It's got some long name that has the word municipality and liability and yeah. all that immunity act. Right. I'm already lost. Yeah. And it, basically what it is, it's a special law that protects cities from being sued. So in other words, cases against the city of Chicago, if you owned a house and you kept a terrible walkway on your house and somebody fell and right in front of your house was a sidewalk in the exact same condition, it would be way easier for me to sue somebody for a fall on your private property sure. than it would be for us to sue the city of Chicago because city of Chicago has the benefit of the Tort Immunity Act. So they're untouchable. No, they're not untouchable because it's not complete immunity. It just makes it harder for us to prove our case, which stinks, right? right. The other thing city of Chicago does is when you sue them, they, when you're asking them for information, they do not like to provide information. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. It is like... <laughs> tooth and nail they don't want to admit anything they don't want to produce anything so when you have a case against the city of chicago on a a sidewalk case first you know most lawyers don't want those cases they won't accept the case i've had people call me with like broken ankles who send me photos with like really bad injuries and attorneys won't take the case and that tells you in my opinion a little bit about what kind of injury lawyer you're dealing with If you have a lawyer who shies away from a sure trial case, then you're not really hiring a trial lawyer, right? You're hiring a lawyer who likes to sign them up and settle them, but if it's really a fight, they're not going to go all the way. Sure, that's a lot of work. Yeah, no, no, for sure it is all – it's a lot of work. And at the end of the day, a law practice, just like any business, is a business, and you got to make a profit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in my office, if we know we have to file a lawsuit – 
then we sign up the case and we immediately start putting the case together for that purpose. Right. And we're not afraid to go in court, right? Um, that's not to say all of them are great. I mean, there's some evidence you can get on some of these cases where you can prove that the problem was there for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And when you can prove that like a hole or a cracked sidewalk or a pothole had been there for, let's say, three or four years and the city didn't do anything about it, yeah. that puts the city in a really tough spot. I bet. Right? The, the city's biggest strength in these city fall-down cases is it's got to be the whole every person walking down the street has to look where they're going. Right? Mm-hmm. And I'm sympathetic to that argument because we're all taught from, you know, you're knee high to a rattlesnake. Your parents mm-hmm. are telling you to watch where you're going, watch where you're going. Right. And we live in the area era of cell phones. I mean, you see it down here, too. Like, people are, like, oh, yeah. cruising Zombies. down the street looking yeah. at their cell phone. Of course. Right. right. But That's how I got here. You know, the, the flip side is that it's foreseeable to the city of Chicago. Yeah. That people will be engaged in conversation, will be looking for their taxi cab, will be um, looking for their friend, checking street addresses, carrying a package, right. pushing a stroller, you know, whatever it is, that, that's normal foreseeable conduct. That's not negligent conduct. That's yeah. normal conduct right. that people do. And that's why sidewalks have to be kept, right? Right. In, in reasonable conditions. So definitely these are cases where it goes back and forth, right? Like they, they've got an answer for every argument. I'm sure. And then, then right. it, and again, it, it's similar to when we were talking about CTA cases. City of Chicago lawyers defend a lot of sidewalk cases. So they know what evidence hurts them. They know what evidence helps them. They know it's what the arguments work, which arguments yes. don't work. And so, you know, they're, they're good at, at not being completely forthright when it comes to giving you the evidence you ask for or being very slow to give it to you. Sure. Hoping that you won't follow up on it, right? And if you, you know, if you're an attorney over at City of Chicago and you're assigned to just try mainly city sidewalk cases, you know, after you've done your 10th or 20th sidewalk case in a row – you start getting pretty good at it. I, I bet. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of, look, City of Chicago's got a budget. They don't want to be throwing money at every person who claims to have been hurt. I get it. Right. On the flip side, though, they have a duty to citizens and visitors to the City of Chicago to provide a reasonably safe sidewalk. Sure. Especially when you have kids. I mean, I, I've nannied a lot in the city, and I've there's many times where I've, I'm pushing a stroller and I remember specifically off Belmont, there's this giant up in Boys Town, the giant pothole uh, in the sidewalk and the, the stroller got stuck. And, you know, thank God the kid was strapped in. But, you know, what if what if they weren't? This is not my kid. And it's ridiculous that I should have to, like, be aware for a pothole on a sidewalk in a, you know, it, it's just it's crazy that 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 they get away with that and i've also and correct me if i'm wrong uh i had a family once that had a really really bad uneven sidewalk and they said uh they, they called the city of chicago and there was a they had to dot they had to take pictures right and they were left with the answer that they had to petition for someone to come out and fix it they 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 had to have somebody else call in and complain about it because this was like they, the homeowners called and they said, "Hey, the sidewalk. We don't want it to be a liability because there's a lot of kids around." Uh, and they said, "Well, we can't really do anything unless somebody else calls in and says, hey, in front of your house, there's an uneven sidewalk.'" Yeah, I mean that's. Sorry, I was just writing oh, no. something down. It's okay. it, this happens to me all the time. Like I'm always thinking about my cases. And it just occurred to me while you were talking that there's like an additional question I want to ask somebody at a deposition. So yeah. if I don't scribble it down, it's like oh, yeah, in course. the head and then out. So I apologize right. for that. No. But yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, it, it amazes me when a homeowner calls and says we have a dangerous sidewalk and the city responds by saying, 
we can't fix it on your complaint. We need another person to right. call and complain. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Really. So so <laughs> before you do anything, you want two notices that a sidewalk needs to be repaired and that it's dangerous. Right. And so this is the sort of um, – what do you call it? Uh, boy, I'm not good with words today. But it's the um, haughtiness or the petty petty, or just like the presumptuousness of the city that has built up around the idea that they have tort immunity. And lawyers are afraid to sue them for sidewalk yeah. cases. It has made them sort of prideful and just not – they're not on top of what they're supposed to be doing. Right. I mean, the the idea – you know – if there was something in your life that hadn't occurred to you or you didn't know about and somebody told you, you know, Amelia, if you don't fix this, somebody could get hurt really bad, I imagine you would address it immediately the minute somebody told you that. Right. If I had a piece of property and there was something dangerous and they told me and I didn't know about it and then somebody told me about it, I would be like, wow, you're right. Right. Not being concerned about lawsuits, but just being a decent human being. Of course, right. And I feel like one of the things about the city of Chicago is, you know, it's a very political city. So if you were an alderman or politically connected or your friend was, that sidewalk would get fixed without them even taking a picture of it. I'm sure. But because they're regular John and Jane public and they don't have – somebody politically connected pushing it they get the runaround from city hall right yes but then the the flip side is because the city of chicago isn't afraid of being held liable in court for hurting somebody for not doing something about a sidewalk like that they're like okay well yeah we need two notices three notices four notices when you know you and i have already established that a normal, reasonable person just needs to be told once. Absolutely. Well, and, and you know, I, I say this, like the north side definitely has, yeah, this is a problem that's everywhere. But I know on the south side, it's an even bigger problem. Like it's 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 terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Yeah. And, you know, what what do they have to do to, I mean, it's hard enough to, to get it done up here. But like that's, it, it, it's feel like there's a lot slipping through the cracks and i mean what, boom, boom. A... Shh, no pun intended <laughs> oh, oh man i didn't even realize that that was, that was awesome <laughs> snap snap snaps um what, what, there's a number you're supposed to report it to uh, it's like was it it's not it's it 311 or something yes yeah because i've done it around my area I, but, but well, how it do doesn't you know seem to it, do very good much good yeah, right Yeah, like how do you know it really got through and also who has that job getting all those uh yeah. And and how many other <laughs> weird calls come on through yeah. 311, right? Right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and like where what what's the priority? Like if if the city has no fear of not addressing it, then it's going to be low on their list. Sure. If they have a fear of addressing it, it's higher on the list. Right. And my, I guess my point is I wish it was higher on the list because right. you know, you you got I mean, look, City of Chicago can't afford to replace all the sidewalks in Chicago constantly, like right. every year. Nobody's asking them to do that. No. You know, we're just asking them to when, – when a citizen or somebody gets hurt or when somebody else in the city notices a problem. Like, here's my question to you. We know darn well that there are police all over the place. There are other sidewalks being worked on, streets being worked on. Right. All this stuff. All over. How okay. long should a dangerous sidewalk sit there before somebody in the city says, "Hey, we better fix that"? Right. Right. Should it should should a broken sidewalk be there for a year before the city break so fixes it? How many it? injuries have to happen before it's fixed? Or Five, should six, it? Seven? Yeah. Sh or should should the broken sidewalk be there for two years before the city discovers it and right. fixes it? Should the hole be there for five years? Before the city fixes it, right? And like, it, or or are we going to say that unless the the thing about the three one one, you know, I get three one one report, yeah, uh, when I sue the city on a sidewalk case, and they, you know, they give us this printout that they keep. Well, here's the problem: they keep it, they produce it. How do I know the records I'm getting are the complete with. records? Yeah, that's number one, and I know that's very cynical, but that's just the way I've with their zero. Zero settlement policy, zero offer policy. 
I've, I'm, I'm becoming very skeptical of, of what they do. Um, but, you know, when you have this situation where they've got the 311 system in place, let's take a step back. Okay, great. Your three, the 311 records you're producing to me says nobody ever called to request you to replace the sidewalk. Yeah. But whose sidewalk is that? It's your sidewalk. Right. That's a city sidewalk that the city built, the city put it there, the city maintains it. And in fact, city, uh, I'm not allowed to go patch it myself. Right. I'm actually violating the law if I go patch the sidewalk. Right. So, you know, as a citizen. You're stuck in this loop. Right. So it's like, to me, if there's a big hole in a sidewalk or a big problem with a sidewalk, and it's been there for like a year or two or three, and the city, the the city's defense is going to be, well, we didn't know it was there. It's not Bro, good really? No. Like, mm-hmm. that's okay? We're going to let the city off the hook on something like that? Yeah, and again, like you were saying, too, I get there's priorities, and they're working on, I feel like there's construction absolutely everywhere with help uh, the water tanks like updating all the pipes and right. i get that they're trying to fix up the um, like the or Wilson street red signs light stop and, or yeah you know fixing the fire hydrants right. or working on traffic signals you know right. painting the lanes on the road like there is plenty of city people all over right. trees the the tree cutting crews yeah mm-hmm. you know it's like everything traffic uh what do you call it traffic meter made people yes who, they're really good at. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure they're yeah, the they're <laughs> they're there every day to give you a ticket if you're parked illegally. Dear but if there's boy. a giant hole in the sidewalk, they don't report it to anybody. Right. Yeah. I mean, is that reasonable? I don't know that that's reasonable. And to touch on our last podcast too, we were talking about how the CTA, you know, is overworked and they're really cutting down on bodies to operate trains and things. It's it's like, oh, well, I see an opportunity for someone to step in and fix, get on top of either the incoming reports of these holes or, uh, you know, sidewalks, et cetera, et cetera, to get this fixed because it's, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, you can, <laughs> you, you trip on a sidewalk and you still have that old argument, you know, watch where you're going. But Gosh, you know, you, you, the reason sidewalks have to be safe is because we know people walk when they're distracted, and that's not negligence. Right. People walk when they're looking for addresses. You know, all the stuff we've already talked about. And, you know, the idea that I, I feel like the city of Chicago in these cases at trial have become near experts at just excuse making and hoping that some of the excuses keep the verdict down. Right. Right. But – you gotta if if you, if uh, if you have a, a a fall on a city property or something like that, you better have a lawyer who has experience with the city, and you gotta be willing. They gotta be willing to go all the way. And I'm looking at you, Scott. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna say I accept every city fall, uh, city sidewalk fall down case, but I do accept some, and um, I'm very aggressive about investigating them right out of the gate because I want a good theory. I want a good theory. Uh, that I think that a jury will believe right out of the right. gate. I'm not one of these guys who is going to take a case, throw it in my file cabinet for six months, and then hope I'm able to prove it, right? Right. If I'm not going to be able to help somebody, I want to know that right away so I can level with them. Right. I pray su- Tell play- them straight. Yeah, I place a You're premium on just being a str- – exactly. Yeah. I place a premium on being honest. I'm right. honest in my personal life. Yeah. There's no reason why um, I like to think of myself as the exception that proves the rule about attorneys, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so far, so good. So um, if any of you folks have any city sidewalk or city of Chicago cases, you know, another common kind of city case is like any kind of city employee running into you with their car Um, Uh, hitting a pedestrian, you know, Chicago police crashes, very common. Really? Yeah, very common. I once represented a guy who got hit by a city of Chicago cop on duty in an unmarked car at night with no headlights on, no sirens, no Mars light. And my guy is going through an uncontrolled intersection. The police officer has a stop sign. The police officer goes through the stop sign at high speed. Oh, 
hits the side of my client's SUV. His SUV like rolls over four or five times and ends up in the grass of a park across the street. While the fire department is cutting my guy out of the SUV, other police arrive and give my client like five or six tickets. No, you that happens be all me. the time. That so that makes if me you, angry. If you get into a crash with a Chicago police officer or a fire de- guy from the fire department mm-hmm. or a CTA uh, bus, it is ninety percent likely. That the policeman, fireman, city of Chicago employee, or CTA bus driver is going to get zero tickets, and you're going to get all the tickets, no matter what the facts of the crash are. I hate to say that, but I've been doing this for about 20 years, and that's what I see over and over. And it's funny, like, I'll talk to some of my friends, and they're like, oh, well, I had to pass on that case because he was listed as Unit 1 on the police report, and he received four tickets. And my response to that is, like, you're not going to sue the entity in control of giving out tickets because they wrote the guy they crashed into a bunch of tickets. Yeah, that makes That doesn't seem to make too much perfect sense. Perfect sense. Yeah. Well, this case that, that – is it? are you still in the process of working that case? Or has that case no, that, since that, been – No, yeah, that, that car versus uh, driver T-bone uh, against Chicago, that settled – uh, a long time ago, but we had to file a lawsuit and fight the case, which is like remarkable to me. I mean, headlights off. No sirens no and sirens, lights. No it's lights. just a Crown Victoria. He was driving at. It had to be high speed. How? How would? I mean, that's that's crazy. I mean, that's awesome that you're able to settle. But still, it's I mean, it's the same. It, the it's it goes back to the old thing, and it's similar to what we were talking about on the sidewalk cases. You know, power corrupts. And they say absolute power corrupts absolutely. I'm not suggesting that city of Chicago or police officers or CTA bus drivers have absolute power, but they definitely have more protection. See, one of the purposes of tort law, of injury law, is deterrence. And, And the theory behind that is if somebody gets held accountable for their careless behavior, they're less likely to do it again, right? Right. But if you exhibit careless behavior and you get off the hook for doing something bad, there's no mechanism that keeps you from doing it again. Of course. Right? Right. So, um, you know, we see that in the criminal law all the time, and we think about it in the context of criminal law, but it's actually one of the three purposes of tort law. It, and it the purpose one of the purposes of tort law is to deter conduct for the safety of all of us right and so right. when we have people who are irresponsible or bad actors or careless actors and they do things in a careless way even though they knew or should have known that what they were doing represents a risk to the rest of us right sure. so it's like uh somebody wants to run a red light okay um. yeah, you shouldn't do that because it's against the law, but even more important than whether the city's going to give you a $50 ticket mm-hmm. is what if there's a mom with a baby in a stroller right. crossing the street yes. when you run the red light mm-hmm. or an elderly person with a walker? Or what about a perfectly healthy man or woman with a family to support? Right. And now they can't support the family anymore. So that, you know, we tend to focus on the criminal aspects of deterrence. But tort law, to me, you know, you hit people in the pocketbook and it makes them realize, wow, ouch. Right. Not going to do that again. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who's like, okay, fine, I paid the ticket. And there was nobody out there anyway. So who cares if I ran the red light? Well, it's the pe- the person you don't see right. when you're going through an intersection at 50 miles an hour. Yeah, because you, you lucked out. Yeah, you didn't hit someone this time. Right. But what and, about next time? Right. You and, didn't get that ticket. And when, and when you do get them, you do hit them and you destroy somebody's life, or even if you make somebody's life 1% more difficult, that's not your – you don't get to act carelessly – and make anyone else's load that they must bear any more difficult, right? right. And our, ta- our tort law deterrence is all about that. If you hurt somebody, we want to make sure 
that you're held responsible for the consequences of what you did right. so you don't do it again. Because clearly, if they were afraid of the criminal law and getting a ticket, they wouldn't have done it. Exactly. So, anyway, end of lecture, end of sermon. <laughs> end rant. Yeah. So, anybody has a case against the city or a fall on a city sidewalk or any kind of injury case, definitely give me a call. Amelia, thanks again for joining me. Thanks for having me. On this amazing episode. Absolutely. I'm going to go, I'm texting 311 right now. Uh, just generally. Just, yeah. Just to say hello. Just to say hi. Hey, guys. What's up? I feel like we should all collectively troll them right now. This podcast has inspired me. No. <laughs> actually, we don't want to troll them, but no. it's it's actually a great thing to report uh, defects in a sidewalk or potholes to 311 because if somebody twists their ankle or breaks mm-hmm. their ankle or takes a serious fall, in theory, there'll be a computer record of the call. That's true. And then we have notice. So it's right. a good thing to do, folks. If you see anything dangerous, call 311 and report it to the city. Do not troll them. Yeah, don't listen to me. I am not the lawyer. Bad Finifrock. I know. Bad Finifrock. I'm the, I'm the part of your conscience you just you push down. No, 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 no. That's a bad idea. Yeah, it's like when you have the angel and the devil on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. You get to be the devil. Nice yes. job. Yeah, I'm the devil this time around. Awesome. Thanks for listening, folks. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. I truly hope that the information in the podcast helps you no matter the situation you find yourself in. But you might need more answers or some more direct help. So there are three ways for you easily to find out more and to get help. If you call my toll-free 24-hour helpline, 888-HURT-318, you'll have a couple of options. 888-HURT-318 is my toll-free 24-hour telephone line. You can call that number and speak with my team night or day. First, you can call 888-HURT-318, and you can speak to me for a free consultation about your case or situation. That's always free and no obligation. Second, you can tell the operator that you'd like a free copy of my injury DVD and book. I created the DVD and book, and I give it away for free to injured people who need answers but who might not be ready to talk to a lawyer yet. Same deal, 100% free, 100% no obligation. Third and finally, you can check out my YouTube channel for informative videos about the injury case and claims process. Or check out my other podcasts for more information and interesting interviews with people who know different things about various aspects of the law. I've put all of this together to help you and to answer your questions. Now, you can also help me, and I hope that you will. If you enjoyed the podcast and if it helped you at all, please subscribe. And if you can, take a minute and please post a positive review of the show. If you're listening to the podcast on YouTube, like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you know anyone who might enjoy the podcast, please spread the word and share it on Facebook. It's my mission to spread good information to as many people as possible. And your liking and reviewing and subscribing to the podcast helps me get the word out. Thanks again. This podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. It doesn't substitute for consulting with a lawyer. If you have a case, speak with a lawyer right away. Mm